How's it going everyone? My name is Keenan and welcome to my channel where us regular people gather to figure out how we can better manage our time and money. And speaking of managing time, today we're going to be talking about how this guy from Hawaii was able to graduate early in three years with a civil engineering degree from the University of Washington. And this was despite people telling me that there was no way I could do it, it would be way too hard, it just doesn't work that way, you're silly and whatever. If you have the opportunity to graduate early, I highly suggest that you do so. And here's my seven reasons on why I was able to do it and get my head start into the real world. And to me, number seven is the most important one of them all. So be sure to stay all the way to the end where you'll also be given the multiple times in a lifetime chance to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And now let's get into it. So number one, going into college, I kind of already had a direction. My dad is a civil engineer. I was pretty good at math and physics. So it kind of all added up for me. So one tip, if you go to a big school like UW, you have the opportunity to sit in on like the higher level classes because no one's really taking attendance. Where is AA Ron right now? So what I did in my freshman year is that I researched all the upper level courses that I was kind of interested in, and I just sat in on a couple lectures to see if the material that they were covering was kind of interesting. So that also helped me gain a little bit of clarity in that I wanted to pursue this as my major. And the reason why I wanted to do this in my freshman year is because I needed to make sure that I was taking the right prerequisite courses so that I could apply for the College of Civil Engineering at the end of that year. Because if you didn't know, for like the majors like engineering, you need to actually apply to get into the major. Major. And as part of the application process, you need to have taken certain courses and have a number of credits in order for you to actually qualify for the major. So I got all of my prerequisite courses in and was accepted into the College of Engineering after my first year at school. And if you want to graduate in three years, you really have to have it figured out by year one. And that's really tough for a lot of people. I realize that not a lot of people go into college knowing exactly what they want to do. If you don't have a specific direction going into college, don't be concerned, don't worry about it. I'm actually probably one of the few people that knew what they were going to do just jumping into campus. So you're not alone if you're not sure. It's just that if you want to graduate early with your desired major, you need to have it figured out within the first year. And since we are talking about direction in college, I kind of wanted to talk about this because I'll probably make another separate video on like my issues with the whole college system. But if you don't have direction, and if you're kind of in a financially uneasy situation, don't worry about going to like the top-notch school. If you're financially strapped, go to a different, smaller, cheaper school where you can get all your prerequisite courses out of the way or, or it gives you the opportunity to experiment in different types of courses to see what you like. And once you figure it out, you can then transfer to the school of your choice. College is so expensive as it is, so don't waste your time trying to figure it out at the most expensive school possible. And what you'll find too is that even the big name schools don't have all the majors or maybe aren't even good at the major that you're trying to get into. So again, if you don't really have direction, there's a lot of ways around it. Just make sure that you're making financially responsible decisions in your uncertainty. So number two, and this was a big one as well, I had AP credits from high school. So I'm pretty sure they still have these programs now and I think they even had like IB or something like that. But basically these are college level courses that you take in high school that give you the credits that you need to get out of some of the like typical like math, science, English courses that you might have to take in college. So I had like about 40 something credits going into college and that took care of a lot of my prerequisite courses. This is also the reason why I was able to take all the courses I needed to apply for my engineering degree in my first year. So a big thing, I was lucky that UW took a lot of my credits, but what you'll find out is that a lot of the big name schools actually don't even take these AP credits, which to me is kind of a big waste of all the work that you did in high school. So before you commit to a college, do an analysis on what amount of credits are going to be taken by certain schools. Because quite frankly to me, the AP coursework should be more than good enough to get these credits for you for college. There is no way that whatever they're going to teach you in these entry level courses is going to be that significant to your career and your degree later on. It's just a way for them to get you to pay more money to the school. So if I were me, I would go to the college that would take all of my AP credits so that I didn't waste the amount of time in high school. So number three, I was really lucky in my registration process. So if you go to a big school, registration can be pretty stressful. I've heard many horror stories about how students didn't get their classes because they couldn't register on time, all the class slots filled up, and they had to wait till maybe the next semester or the next year even to take that course so that they could get to the department of their choice. So I will admit that is a downside of going to a large school. So you will need to be a little bit lucky and you have to be quick. To be honest with you, there was only gonna be one way that I was gonna be able to apply for the College of Engineering in my first year. There was 
only one set of schedules that would allow that to happen and I was very lucky that I got that. So when you're going through the scheduling process at a big school, you have to make sure you know exactly what time slots your class is going to be, what that course number is, and have a backup plan in the event that it doesn't work out. So a tip that I did, and I actually still use this for like any time I need to sign up for something instantly or I know that there's going to be a lot of people signing in at one time, I use my phone for registration. And maybe this will be disproved if there's a tech guy out there, disprove me or let me know. But what I did, instead of using like the school's Wi-Fi, you know, that was just in my dorm, I just believed that since everyone was going to be logging on at the same time, it would slow my process down of actually registering for my classes. So I always did my registration on my phone. And like I said, I do this all the time. If I need to sign up for anything or if I need to be the first one for something, I'll always use my phone and I'll use my data. And so far it's worked out for me, so I just do that from now on. And number four, I did have to overload my credits. So even with the AP coursework, I still needed to overload my credits. I had to take along with my regular engineering based coursework, like an extra arts or whatever course, just so that I could make the amount of credits to graduate. And they call UW a trimester, but it's actually really a quarter system and nobody really does the summer quarter. But basically I took 18 to 20 credits a quarter just so that I could graduate early. But paying that little extra to do those two credits over the 18 made a lot more financial sense than staying another year at college. And I only took one class over a summer and that was like a basic physics course. But yes, if you're trying to graduate early and you're trying to push through, expect that you're going to have to take a little bit of a higher course load than normal. And that's why my next point becomes so much more important when you're overloading your coursework. So number five, my learning style match the college system. What do I mean by that? Because again, like I said earlier, the UW was a quarter system, so the classes are kind of quick hit, and you don't really spend like half a year going over the material and then getting ex <laughs> examined. It's not a word, right? Examinicized. You're not getting tested on a half a year's worth of material, it's more just like three months. And that works a lot better for me, that's actually how my high school was set up as well, so it really helped especially when overloading my coursework. Just the way my brain works, I can take in a lot of information at once, and retain it for a certain amount of time and that three month period was the good amount of time that I retained most of that information. Honestly, if it was a semester system, I probably would have struggled a little bit more just because you have to remember that much more over a longer period of time. So I'll give you a basic example of my study habits. I don't really believe in taking notes. I was more concerned with paying attention in class so that I could digest and hear what the professor was saying. But that's just me. When test time came, it wasn't like I was studying for weeks at a time and you know, slowly but surely building up my repertoire of knowledge. Repertoire. My repertoire of knowledge. So what I would do is on test day, say the test was at like 10 a.m. or something like that, I would sleep early and wake up at like 2 in the morning and then just study in the library from like 2 till the test just so I could just cram all that knowledge in there and just diarrhea it onto the paper. So again, that worked for me in terms of getting the decent grades, but maybe that might not work for somebody else or maybe someone works better in a semester system. You just have to know yourself and if you're trying to overload your schedule like we said earlier, you have to make sure that the way the academic curriculum is set up is gonna set you up for success. So number six, I had really great teachers in the College of Engineering. Great teachers in the College of Engineering and I had great classmates. I was very lucky that the faculty in the Civil Engineering Department was extremely helpful, always open for help, and just really wanted the students to grow. But also, and I think this is really important if you're trying to graduate early or even just in general, but also your classmates become so much more important when you're trying to graduate early. It's so much harder to learn all this material on your own and to have some other people there that you can bounce ideas off of or if you're not sure about something, you can call them up and help each other out on homework and projects. It really, really helps. I owe a lot of my ease of graduation to the people that I had around me and I'm so grateful that they were there for me. Especially when you get into the College of Engineering or whatever your specific major is, the people there become part of your network and a lot of times you'll stay close with them for years to come. And out there in the real world, you're going to need to be working with people. And this is one thing that I really like about college is that it gets like-minded people together so you can see how that works and how you can create a team off of that. So again, if you're trying to graduate early, surround yourself with people that can help you. So number seven, and like I said earlier, I really think this is the most important one because other than financial benefit of graduating early, it doesn't make any sense for you to graduate in three years if you don't have a job lined up. So this is where getting an internship or some sort of experience before you graduate is so important. My internship that I did my second year of college 
is the reason why I have my job now. It's the reason why I was able to walk off the stage of graduation knowing that I had employment on the other side. I really believe that you don't know what the career is going to be unless you get some sort of taste of it. I don't know, just, I don't know why this is taste, but it seems really silly to rush out of college for you to just stay at home with your parents. Getting a job and internship experience can really help you figure out what you want to do. And if you're really trying to graduate early, you should really start that process in your first summer out of college. I know it can be really tempting. I want to go home home and see all my friends and tell them how much I learned in college and how different I was and whatever. But if you're trying to graduate early, you really only have two summers to get your stuff figured out. And actually to me, this goes for anyone that's trying to graduate college even in four years. Get the experience, put yourself out there, and that may completely alter the way that you look at your career. Like for me, I was lucky that I stayed within the civil engineering realm. Instead of doing design, I'm doing construction. But some people may not even like anything in that realm and they might have to change their major entirely. And that's why experience is so valuable because it shows you what your day-to-day -day operation is gonna be like and if you're really gonna be happy in that environment. School will not teach you that. Well, thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. If you have any further questions about this or you want me to go in depth on any other topic, please comment below and I'll be sure to reply to you. And as always, please like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any more videos from me and you can become a part of our growing family here on YouTube. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.